Welcome to this playlist about graphing functions. And um, I will be making several videos, and I'll, uh, like I said, I'll put them in the playlist. And we're going to start at the beginning, uh, which is graphing linear functions. But you need to have a solid understanding of graphing linear functions before you can move on to graphing different types of functions. Okay? So, just to give you a bird's eye view now, what are we going, uh, going to do? Um, okay, so we're going to start with linear functions, then we have quadratic functions, cubic functions, reciprocal functions, exponential functions, yeah? and a sketch of what they roughly look like. Now, in order to be able to, to graph a reciprocal function, you need to understand the basics, you need to understand linear functions. Okay? Also, when you are graphing a reciprocal function or an exponential function, Usually that will also involve, or there will also be a question about a linear function at the same time. Okay? Now, exponential functions, we call them exponential functions because x is in the exponent. Okay? A reciprocal function, the x is in the denominator of a fraction. Cubic functions, the highest power of x is a cube, a 3. A quadratic function, the highest power of x is a 2. And a linear function, the highest power of x is 2. One, okay, and if you draw a linear function, you get a line, and that is very important to realize. Yeah, a straight line if you want. Yeah, all lines are straight because these are curves. Yeah, you get a line when you graph a linear function. Now, so I will be returning to that sheet uh, during some of the videos in this playlist, and as you can see, we're going to graph three linear functions now, but actually we're going to do that in the next video, yeah? Because now I just want to show you the absolute basics. Because if, if I want to draw a line, yeah, it's important to realize or to ask yourself, how many points do I need? How many points do I need to draw a line? Now, um, let's say um, uh, one point. Let's say I have one point. Do I now know what the line is going to look like? Well, if I have one point, the line could go like this, yeah? But the line could also go like that, or the line could go like that, yeah? or like this. So with one point, yeah, it's not enough to graph my line. So the question is, how many points do I need to, grow, uh, to draw uh, a line? Well, the answer to that uh, is two, because if I have two points, two coordinates, then my line can only look like this. Okay, so you need two coordinates. However, always find three coordinates because if you see that all three are on the same line, then you know you didn't make a silly mistake somewhere finding those coordinates. Okay, so that third point is your checkpoint, if you like, eh? your checker. If you find three points, let's say one, two, and that's your third point, and they're not on one line, then you know you've made a mistake. Perhaps that point is wrong, yeah, because the line looks like this. Perhaps that point is wrong because the line looks like this, yeah, or perhaps that point is wrong because the line should look like that, yeah. So in that case, you'd have to check all three coordinates, yeah. But when all three are on one line, you can tell yourself, well, I didn't make a silly mistake. And how do I find these three points? This is what I do. This equation, this linear equation, yeah, because the highest power of x is 1, shows the relationship between x and y. And it is like a machine, if you want. Okay? It's a little factory. Okay? And you're going to put something in, an x. Yeah? You're going to add it by 1, and then you're going to get something out, a y. And you can put anything in for x, whatever you want. Now, I'm never making, I'm never drawing this this uh, this factory, yeah? but I always draw a table of values. Okay, I call it a fishbone table because it looks like a dead fish. You see that? Okay, so choose something for x. Uh, what should I put in? Well, let's say I put in for x the number one. Okay, and the machine starts working, and then y equals one plus one, so y will be two. So one of the coordinates of this function, of that line, is 1, 2. So 1 for x, 2 for y. You see that? So that is over there. I can do another point. Let's say I take the point 2, okay? Um, if I put in 2, yeah, the machine starts working. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 2, 3, that is another point. Now I can see that my line looks like this. But I always find a third point just to check myself. 
Let's say I take the point 1000. 1000 plus 1 is 1001. But that is a little bit difficult to graph, isn't it? Yeah, because that's not going to fit on this piece of paper. So, although that is a correct point, this point will be on my line because those lines go on up till infinity. It's not a very wise point to choose, yeah, because it doesn't fit on my graph. So I'm going to take one more point. Let's say the point for x is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And that then will be my third point. All three of them on one line. Then I know I didn't make a silly mistake. Yeah, and then I draw my line. And you do that accurately with a sharp pencil. And don't just draw a tiny bit of it. No, draw a nice, fir excuse me, firm, big line yeah as long as you stay within your axis so do not continue too much yeah you could put some arrows there indicating that it goes on and on and on up till infinity okay this was actually longer uh, this is a longer video than i intended yeah so quickly to the next video where we are going to graph these three linear functions yeah and i'm going to show you what these numbers yeah, how that affects your graph if you like okay so moving on to the next video please or check my site explainingmaths.com for more resources bye bye